G'day guys, I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and Content Snare. And in this video, you are going to learn how to automatically create folders for your clients in Google Drive. Now, this is really handy when you have clients signing up for whatever you do, like whatever service you give them, uh, and you don't wanna have to manually create a folder or folder structure in Google Drive. Now, this same process works with most cloud storage tools like Dropbox or whatever one you're using. And we're gonna start with a really basic example and build on it so you can see what kind of cool stuff you can do here. Some examples of where you might use this are like when a client signs off on a proposal, you might want to automatically create uh, their folder structure in Google Drive. Uh, maybe when you add them to your project management system or CRM, you want to just automatically create all these folders. So it's a pretty cool workflow for a lot of professional services businesses. If you'd like to learn other cool ways to automate your business and get more productive to get more done in less time and basically just do less work in general, hit that red subscribe button below for regular videos. And if you are new to Zapier, if you've never used Zapier before, I'm going to link below to my Zapier tutorial. It'll also show above uh, the top of this video as a card. Uh, click that because I will jump through, like I'm not going to explain every little piece of Zapier in this. So if you've never used Zapier before, I'd recommend and you go check that one out. That's it. Now let's dig into creating folders automatically uh, for your clients. Okay, so over at Zapier, I have already created a Zap, set up a trigger using Content Snare, and renamed it to Create Client Folder in Google Drive. Now, Content Snare is a tool that helps collect files and information from your client. So let's say you start a job with a client, you need a whole bunch of information and files before you can really start work. So you send out uh, what's called a request, and then they can upload and, and add information to that, which comes back to you. And we're going to trigger this workflow when we actually send out that request for information and files. And then we're going to create a folder for that client. This trigger could be any event in your client onboarding. So like if your proposal had just been accepted, you could have a trigger here from say better proposals to say uh, when a client has signed their proposal, create the folder. It might be when you create a client in your project management system. Uh, just This is just an example using Content Snare. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and create the action. So I'm gonna search for Google Drive. And you'll see the very first action we've got there is create folder. So let's go ahead and do that. Select your account. And now we have to choose where that folder is going to get created. So you have a look at the first one here. These are different drives. So this is my personal one and these are shared drives that are created within Google Drive. I'm just gonna go with my personal one for now. And I'm just gonna quickly show you here. So I've got my drive and I've created a folder within that called client folders. You know, this is gonna be whatever folder structure you like, um, but that's the one we're gonna try and find here. So the folder we're gonna create it in is the parent folder. I'm gonna try and find that uh, client folders one. Now, uh, if you have to go deep inside several folders here, like if I wanted to put it inside that template folder, you first click client folders and then you click this again and it should reload and bring up the folders within that one, right? So that's how you go inside multiple levels of folder. There is another trick here. If you wanna bypass doing that, you can just get this ID out of the URL of the folder you wanna put it in. So I'm just gonna control C on that. Uh, go back into parent folder, choose custom value here and paste that directly in there. That's another way to do it. Um, if you don't want to step through it manually, you can switch back to the other system here. But I'm just going to leave that as our client folders selected there. And now we have to give the folder a name. Now this is completely up to you how you wanna name your folders, but typically it's probably going to be the name of the company, which comes through from Content Snare here. Now, if you are using a proposal tool as your trigger, you're probably gonna have the company name in there as well. It really depends what you're using as your trigger, what you're gonna call it, but generally it's going to be the client company name, right? So I'm gonna to go to continue and test this. If we jump back over here, we should see that folder show up. There's our new client and there it is. 
And that's really all there is to it for the simple version. At this point, you could go ahead and turn your zap on. And now every time you publish a request in Content Snare, then you're going to have that folder created. There is a bit of a problem with this though, right? If you send two requests to one client, or if you are using a proposal tool and you have two different proposals out for one client, you're going to create a second version of that folder. Like if I retest this, it's gone and created that exact same folder again. And we don't want that. Like if we have other files and stuff already in this one for that client, we don't want to go and duplicate that entire folder because um, then we're going to have two places to put things and it's going to become a bit of a mess. So to prevent that, before we go and create this folder, we're going to see if one already exists with the same name. Uh, but we're going to create a step in the middle here using Google Drive again. And this time we're going to find a folder. So click that and continue. Again, choose your account. And the folder name we're gonna search for is whatever we plan on setting it as in the next step. So again, it's just gonna be client company name in this one. And we're going to search within the exact same location, right? Because otherwise it's gonna search through our whole drive and we don't want that. So we're going to look inside that exact same folder. And you'll notice here, we've got an extra little checkbox that's actually going to make the rest of this zap a bit redundant, right? So we're gonna try and find the folder named Acme Corp. And there's a box here that says, create the folder if it doesn't exist yet. So that is actually super handy, right? So you tick that guy. And now we actually do not need this step anymore. So you can go ahead and delete that. I'm gonna go back here and delete this folder and test this uh, action in Zapier, right? So it's gonna try and find Acme Corp. But because of that checkbox, it's gone and created the folder. And if we retest it, It has not gone and created a new one. It's actually going to just give us the name of this folder back uh, from this action. So now we can go on with making this a little bit more advanced. And now at this point, you have a zap that will prevent the same folder being created twice. But if we wanna take this a step further now, let's say you wanna create multiple folders within this client folder. So maybe in here you want a folder for deliverables and you'd like a folder for uploaded client files, for example. So we're just gonna create two more folders in here. So jumping back into Zapier, these are going to be extra steps. So I'm gonna hit plus, look for Google Drive again. And we're gonna create a folder within that same spot as before. Uh, and we're going to want to create a folder within this client folder, right? So we, we don't really want to select Acme Corp from here, right? Like we could select um, client folders and then that'll reload to Acme Corp. But that means it's going to create that new folder in Acme Corp every time. Instead, we actually want to create this folder inside whatever folder we just created. So here, you're going to have to choose custom. And then you can see we've got data that comes from the previous steps in this zap. So we're going to open that up and choose the ID. So this is the ID of the folder. For some reason, it's brought in that old data from the pre what I had selected before. So I'm just going to delete that and close that silly sidebar. So just to quickly go over that again, we had to switch to custom and choose the ID from the previous step. So the one where we find or create the folder. Uh, now, if it created a new folder or if it found an existing folder, it doesn't matter. That will still come into the same field there, ID, which you can now see is mapped in there. And so we're gonna create a new folder called uh, deliverables. Continue on, run that test. Just double check that's worked, yep. And then we're gonna do the same thing again, but this time we're going to create a folder for uploaded files. 
I'll just do it again so you can see exactly how it's done. Choose your account. I'm actually skipping over selecting the drive because it's using my personal drive. That's the default anyway. So again, the parent folder, switch over to custom, open that second step and map in the ID. And this one might be uploaded files. Run the test, double check it worked and we're good. Now at this point you might, might want to rename these to be like create uh, deliverables folder, just so you know uh, which one is which I think. And now we have a workflow that when a request is published, we're gonna find or create that folder for the client and then create two folders within that client folder. There is one more step to getting this right. And the first time I recorded this video, I forgot to add it in. So we're gonna add a little step in here and then for the rest of the video, you're not going to see it in any of the recordings. So that just letting you know uh, to preempt uh, when you see it disappear, you might be wondering what's going on. But there is a little problem here because uh, right now we have the, when the request is published, we're gonna create the client folder and then these two folders, right? Let's say this is the second time we've published a request for the same client. So now we're going to find the existing folder, but then it's gonna go ahead and duplicate the deliverables and files folder because it's still going to run these two steps. And we do not want to run these two steps or anything uh, that we're about to create in the rest of this video. Um, so I'm gonna add what's called a filter in here. And a filter stops the workflow running under certain conditions, right? So you can see here it says only continue if. And we only want to create these folders if it's the first time we've created this folder, right? And that's actually really easy to do. Uh, if you have a look in here, open this step and there's some data called that data was found. So, and notice that was true. What this is saying is step two found an existing folder. If that's true, then it found an existing folder. And if that is the case, then we don't want to create these folders again because we know that we created them last time when it was the first time this folder was created. So if it has found it, it means this is the second time it's run. So we only want to run these steps if it didn't find the folder. So we're going to say, zap data was found exactly matches false. And in this case, it's saying the zap would not have continued, which is okay because the last time we ran this test, it found the folder rather than created it. So that's exactly what we want. So again, just to summarize, the first time it's going to create a folder in here, in this client folders. Uh, and because it's created it, that zap data was found will be false and it will continue with the rest of the workflow. The second time zap data was found will be true because it found the existing folder and it will not continue with the rest of the workflow. Okay, so let's continue on with making this workflow more advanced. Remember, this filter is going to disappear from the video from now on because I screwed up the first time I recorded. Now let's take this another step. Maybe the deliverables folder, you actually want to share that with your client so they have access at any time. So I'm gonna add another step of Google Drive, of course. And we're going to find the add file sharing preference action here. Now, just one note before I move on, if you are using shared drives with Google Drive, you unfortunately can't share entire folders. Now, to me, this is a massive problem with Google Drive, uh, with shared drives specifically, and I hate it. Um, but um, if you are using just normal Google Drive, this is possible. Just gonna go ahead, choose that account, You'll notice here it says file ID, uh, and we actually want to do this with a folder, so it might look like it's not going to work, but it actually does. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and same thing as before, 
But this time we want to do it with the deliverables folder, right? So change over to custom, find the deliverables folder ID. And now we're going to choose a sharing preference of anyone on the internet who has the link can view that folder and continue. And I'll run that test. So if I jump back over to Google Drive, here is the two folders we created. Oh, and it looks like that icon has changed, but you can verify that by right clicking and going to share. And it looks like it's changed to anyone on the internet with this link can view. So that is um, exactly what we were trying to achieve. Now you could actually inside your zap, you can see it's returned to the shareable link here. So we could actually create an email step uh, to email that link to our client. I'm not going to go into detail on how to do that in this video, but if you would like to learn more about Zapier, head over to jimmyrose.me slash Zapier and check out my course there. We go into all kinds of stuff around uh, how you can use Zapier in all kinds of different ways in your business. There's just one more thing I'd like to show you. Let's say back over in our client folder, we have this file here, a client info sheet that we want to copy into every single new client. So let's jump back over to Zapier. And what we're gonna do is just copy that file into each new folder. So we're gonna add one more step here. Again, of course, using Google Drive. Open this guy up and we're gonna use the copy file action. And the first thing it wants is the file that we're going to copy. Now this could be any file, right? It doesn't have to be a Google sheet. It's just the one I'm using in this example. Um, I've opened this up and it's just showing me a list of like random stuff it's finding in my Google Drive. Um, we're gonna use the custom option again. So go ahead and open up that file. We're going to need the ID. And that is everything after the D slash in the URL there. So I'm just gonna copy that out um, before the slash edit, right? So you don't want the slash there and you don't want the slash there. You want everything in between. I'll go ahead and copy that. Go back to Zapier. Choose the custom tab again and paste in the ID there. We actually do wanna give it a file name because you can see there it's going to default to copy of original file name. So we don't want that. We actually just want client info sheet. I mean, you might wanna change this to client info sheet dash uh, client name, for example. Totally up to you. And the folder we're gonna put this in is the one we created here. This is the client folder step that we did earlier. I probably should have renamed that so, we, so it was a bit more easy to distinguish between the others. But if we click here, go across to custom, uh, open that step up and put the ID in here. Continue and test. And have a look inside Acme Corp. There it is. So we go client info sheet Acme Corp. Perfect. So now we have a pretty long zap here, six step, where when a file request was sent in Content Snare, we're creating that client folder. We're creating two folders called deliverables and files within that client folder. We're sharing the deliverables folder with a link, and then we're copying uh, that client info sheet into um, there. So all automatically we've created these two folders, shared this one and put this file in here ready to go, all without having to touch anything every time uh, we send a request in Content Snare. And there you have it. We've walked through setting up folders for new clients, but also preventing duplicates, creating multiple folders if you have a full folder structure, and even creating initial files for clients if you need that kind of thing. In the next video, we'll look at automatically uploading files into this folder structure when clients upload files in Content Snare or, or another system. Uh, check out the link either showing as a card at the top of this video or in the description below for part two of this. Uh, that's it. Again, if you want any more help automating your business and getting more productive to basically do less work, please hit that red subscribe button below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.